synthesize a function generator by frodenstein's equation to solve the equation to solve y is equal to 1 upon x so the range of x between 1 to 2 this is a problem apart from this uh, they have given the range of input angle as 90 degrees they have also given the range of output angle as 90 degrees once again and they have given the value of psi 1 as 30 degrees they have given the value of phi 1 as 60 degrees and z1 they have given it as one unit okay so this is the problem statement and this is the given data to us Uh, are you done with noting down the problem? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So let us go for the solution of this. <clears throat> so we are going to use the Chebyshev spacing once again. What should be the value of uh, small n here? Okay, let, first let me write the equation. So since x is the variable here, which is varying between 1 to 2, so I'm going to write delta xj is delta x by 2. We have 1 minus cos of pi into 2j minus 1 divided by 2. So this is the equation here. So in this equation, we have delta x will be equal to 2 minus 1, that is 1, that is the range of the input parameter. And n will be equal to 3. As I said, for Frodenstein's, we are having the standard three equations. And to solve these three equations, uh, we can have only three unknowns. That is why we have taken small n equal to 3. So with this, uh, we can find out what is delta x1 delta x2 and delta x3 and from that, yes this we are finding for crank rocker right yeah this is crank rocker okay So I'll just give the values because uh, we have been solving this Chebyshev since long time now. So it should be not a problem for you guys. 
the for x1 is 1.0669 x2 is 1.5 and x3 is 1.933 the corresponding values for y that is y0 will be equal to 1 because y is 1 by x so 1 by 1 is 1 so similarly y1 i have got it as 0.937 y2 i got it as 0.66 why 3 is 0. Point for you 172 and y4 will be 1 by 2 that is 0.5 <clears throat> so these are the uh, precision points that we have got okay so all of this is precision points in the next step we need to solve for the precision angles i hope you have done till this step yes sir so in precision angles the first one i'll be finding out the in, for the input angles so we have psi j equal to delta psi upon delta x into xj minus x1 okay so psi1 is already given to us okay psi1 is given to us as 30 degrees so i'll be finding out from psi2 so delta psi is the range of input angle it is given to us as 90 divided by delta x we have found it as 1 and value of x2 i have got it as 1.5 minus x1 is 1.0699 So just calculate and let me know what is the value for this. Thirty-eight point nine eight. In the similar line. Seventy-seven point nine five. Seventy-seven point nine. Okay. Nine five. So next we need to find out for the output angles. So phi j will be equal to delta phi divided by delta y. <clears throat> Inside the bracket it will be y j minus y one. So delta phi again that is the range of output angle. Once again, this is ninety, and what will be delta phi? Point five. This is point five. And y two is zero point six six minus y one is. Zero point nine three seven two. I think here we have to take maximum minus minimum range. Yeah, right, correct. Hmm. 
So this gives minus forty nine point eight six. Okay. So, so I we, have think I have, we have to take this as minus. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I told you that it is maximum minus uh, minimum always delta y. But in this case, uh, I think I was uh, there. I was wrong. So delta y will be taking maximum in the sense. What is the maximum number here? That is y four minus y naught. So delta y will be point for you minus one. That is sorry minus point five. Okay, so your answer will be here plus. I'm sorry for that. This is our phi two value. Similarly, phi three. How much you are getting? Seventy five point five six. So, but these are delta phi two, delta phi three, right? No, no, no. Uh, I think uh, if you check the previous problems also for precision angles, we don't take it as delta. We directly find out the phi two and phi three, not the range. So, but previous term we had taken delta and then added to that phi one. No, 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 no. See, in the previous problem also we have found out phi two and phi three, phi two and phi three only. But what I have told you is, see now, for example, in this case, uh, okay, let me change the colors here. I have, what I found out is phi two, right? It is with respect to what here? It is with respect to here y one. That means with respect to the first position. So this phi two actually it is nothing but phi one two. That means it is between one and two. Similarly, while solving for phi three, in your pro, uh, formula again, you have taken y one only in the formula. That means this is nothing but phi one three, the angle between one and three. In the previous problem, what I've done is I've added the our assumption of phi one, phi zero one. In this problem, it is already given to us. Yes, sir. Right. So let me just check whether I, I think I can go to that. Uh, yeah, over here. Here, uh, this is the first, okay second problem. Let's try to crank mechanism. Mm. So first row, third one, I think. First row, third. Okay, I think you might be getting confused with this problem then. Wherein our independent parameter itself was theta, so we have taken that delta theta here. But when we come to input angles, okay, now in slider crank we are not finding this input angles. No, it has to be this one only. So while substituting in Frudenstein's equation, we have added it that because we want the yeah, that's right. horizontal. Yeah? Correct. Yes. So let us draw this so that it will be more clear to you. So for the input angles, okay, psi one is given to us in the problem as uh, what is the value of psi one? The unit has thirty degrees, right? So for input, this is your psi one, which is given to you as thirty degrees. Okay. Next, what you have found out is you have found out psi two with respect to x one or with respect to first position. So this is as good as psi of one two. You can write it as one two. That means angle between one and two. So this is our first position. 
So the second position between one and two, it is seventy-seven. I'm just drawing randomly here. So this is second position, and this angle is seventy-seven. Similarly, for psi three also, you have found out this by using the formula and referring x one. So the angle is measured with respect to one. So the third position, it is measured with respect to one. So from one till here. So second is thirty-eight and yeah, third. Yeah, thirty-eight. Correct. Right. 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 So this is thirty-eight, and this is seventy-seven point nine. Okay, this is for input. Similarly, for output also, it is the same thing. So we have the first position, wherein the phi one is given to us as sixty degrees. And when I draw the second position, so phi one two, it is measured with respect to one. That is forty nine. So this angle is forty nine degrees, and the third position is seventy five degrees. Again, with respect to position one only, seventy five. So if you want to measure all the angles with respect to zero, then you can also take here y zero in the formula only. If I take y zero, then automatically all your angles, whatever you are getting, are measured with respect to the horizontal line. Anyways, now I need to find out our actual values of the precision angles. These are what we found out using the formula here. So actual actual precision angles will be the angles which are measured with respect to the horizontal line. So let me write down. I have psi one as thirty degrees. Psi two. What we have got uh, here for psi two, thirty-eight point nine eight. So this will be thirty-eight point nine eight plus thirty degrees. That is of psi one. Okay. So this I am getting it as sixty-eight point nine degrees. Similarly, psi three. How much you have got? Seventy-seven point nine plus thirty degrees again. So it will be one hundred and seven point nine degrees. This is for input. Similarly for output, that is phi one. We are having it as sixty degrees. So what is phi two? Forty-nine point eight. Plus sixty, so it is eight here. Nine hundred and nine, right? Hundred and nine point eight. Similarly, phi three. I've got it as seventy five point five. So this is seventy five point five plus sixty. So this is phi one thirty five point five. Correct. I hope what uh, step we have done just now it is clear to everyone. For every angle that we have found out, I have added this uh, phi value because I want the angle to be measured not with respect to position one but with respect to the horizontal position. Is it clear? Yes, sir. In the next step, we'll use uh, the Frodenstein's equation. So I have k one cos of psi one plus k two cos of phi one plus k three equal to minus cos of psi one minus phi one. So this is our standard equation. We'll go on substituting the values of psi one, psi two, psi three 
and 51.253 accordingly. So the first equation will be K1 cos 30 plus K2 cos of sorry, cos of 60 plus K3 equal to minus cos of 30 minus 60. This is our first equation. Similarly, the second equation would be K1 cos of, I'll directly round it up to 69 degrees, plus K2 cos of 109.8 plus K3 equal to minus cos of psi 1, that is uh, psi to 69 minus 109.8. This is our second equation. Third equation K1 cos of 107.9 plus K2 cos of phi 3, which is 135.5 plus K3 should be equal to minus cos of Hundred and seven point nine minus one thirty five point five. This is our equation number three. If you solve equation one, two, three, three equations, three unknowns, so you should be able to get the values of K one, K two, and K three. Point four one. Okay, this is zero point four one minus zero point three eight. Okay. Minus 1.03. So these are the constants which we have got K1, K2, K3 based on which we need to identify the values of Z. So already uh, we have Z1 to be given as one unit in the problem. Okay. One unit of length. That unit can be anything. One unit can be equal to 10 mm or 15 mm or one meter, anything, it's one unit. So we can use the equation that we have K1 equal to Z1 by Z4. Out of this, I know Z1, I know K1. So I should be able to get the value of Z4. How much are you getting Z4? 2.44. 2.44. Okay. Uh, 2.44 units. Similarly, if I use uh, the next equation that is K2 equal to minus Z1 upon Z2. So again, we know what is the value of Z1. We know what is K2. So I'll get Z2 over here. That is 2.63. Okay. And if we use the last equation, that is K3 equal to Z3 square minus Z1 square minus Z2 square minus Z4 square divided by two times Z2, Z4. So from this, I should be able to get the value of Z3 now.
Yes, how much it is? Zero point eight or zero point seven? So just a minute, I'm getting error. Yeah. What about others? Yes, point point six eight point eight one. Point point eight one. Okay. So the best way uh, was not a part of your academics or from exam point of view, but uh, if you actually go to construct this. You should be able to get a mechanism. Like if I take uh, one unit as 10 mm, so I'll have this Z1 over here. And Z2, we have 2.63, but we don't know the angle here. That is the problem. So if I know the uh, angle of theta 2, then we can go ahead for the construction. OK, is it clear? Because this completes uh, the Frodenstein part. We have done with the crank rocker as well as we have done with the slider crank mechanism. Okay, if you want, I can still solve another two problems, but the method and procedure is still going to remain same. At the end, you should uh, get these values, that is the precision angles. If you can get these precision angles, then all you have to put is in the Frodenstein's equation and get the constants k1, k2, k3, and then the link lengths z1 to z4. So there isn't much uh, twist or turn in this concept of Rodenstein's equation. Right. So in the next class, uh, we'll be taking up the next uh, part of this chapter. As I said, there are only uh, two analytical methods of synthesizing the mechanism. One was uh, the Rodenstein's equation, which we have done. Uh, the second one uh, is known as blocks method. So again, it has a, a bit of lengthy derivation. And uh, of course, the numerical are not much, one or two numericals. You, you can refer any textbook. You will not find more than two numericals on this because at the max, we can only change the numbers and the uh, formula is there. And all you have to do is direct substitution. In the next class, we'll take up with the derivation of blocks method of analytical synthesis. So if you don't have any doubts as of now, uh, sir. Yes. So for uh, for IA, this is there, no? Uh, the prudence and the numerical is last thing. Uh, for IA, uh, I have mentioned that. Uh, you have yes. mentioned Prudenstein. Uh, yeah, Prudenstein's equation, derivation, and numericals. Uh, but derivation only for slider crank. Yes, only for slider crank. That means up till uh, this class, whatever is there. Whatever I've done, that is there for your eye. So yes. Okay, that doesn't mean that you don't attend the next class of blocks method. No. Okay. okay, thank you then. Thank you. Thank you.